Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Canada's Sportsbook. S-D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! You know, I'm glad we did the Matt Murray Podcast when we did. Because, yeah. because honestly... Uh, it wouldn't even be in the top 10 stories today. To try as they might, it was not all about the Leafs on free agency day. Not even close. Some um, of it. Some of it. Some hey, of I wonder, it. did Sports Interaction have odds? Uh, SportsInteractive.com slash STPN. Did they have odds on Charlie Montoyo being fired on free agency day? Did they have that? <laughs> man. Yeah, that was, man. I forgot that even. That's, that's the, the point. <laughs> that's called a news dump from a Toronto Blue Jays team that doesn't want a lot of attention on that firing was, their manager. That was, uh, I saw that, well, obviously I had eyes on Twitter, uh, but that broke during the draft stream I was doing Grav, mm-hmm. and I'm like, uh, no, we have to talk about this, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah? yeah. At the very least, briefly. Yes! Uh, uh, well, I mean, they're owned by... Canada's baseball team. What was, what was your take? Well, it was just, well, <laughs> yeah, shit, they're losing a lot of games, and they shouldn't be. It wasn't a very complicated take. We didn't spend a lot of time oh, okay, on it. Okay. But also, like, you got to remember my co-host was from Texas. And, yeah, and that's he, why I'm so interested to hear what you said. And he does Grav's gaffes uh, and talking about baseball dang it's basically. And, and that's, you know, you're supposed to contend for the World Series and you end up firing your manager. That's dang it. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, a sure, that's a little dang it. Yeah, dang it ish. For, for all, like, the tailspin that they're in, they're still in the playoff spot because MOB expanded the wild card, so they're in, like, the third wild card spot. Hell yeah, yeah, brother. And the division's really tough. Like, every team is above 500 right now, and the Oilers are... Or the Oilers. The, uh, fuck the Oilers. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm totally the kidding. Orioles are on, like, a 10-game winning streak. I know. What it's, the it's fuck? T- it's tough for the Jays the or- right Orioles now. Orioles being good at baseball. It's no way. They're trying to lose, and all of a sudden, they're really good. No way. Um, <laughs> uh, if you want... An NHL free agency recap for day one, the Jesse Blake Sports Report. You're listening to it. Featured uh, (laughs) uh, Andrew Berkshire. So Jesse got a bit of a head start on this episode, but I think we got to start today with Johnny Gaudreau rejecting the Flames, the Flyers, the Islanders, New Jersey, and probably a few others for Columbus. And before we get into this, I want to say two things. Okay. Two things I need to say. Hmm. Number one, Aaron Portsline, uh, Blue Jackets reporter for The Athletic, Blue Jackets reporter slash columnist slash expert extraordinaire and friend of the show, will be on the show tomorrow to break it down for us. Hooray. So Aaron uh, Aaron is the uh, the the guy you want to talk to. So also, we're, we're doing a show him. tomorrow. Yeah, we're doing another show tomorrow. Uh, number two, can you chill the fuck out with your Columbus hate? Especially if you're Canadian. Why? Let me just say this before we get into Johnny talk. Americans talk about Columbus the same way they talk about Canada. Interesting. So don't go jumping on the bandwagon wagon and shitting on Columbus because Americans treat Columbus and Buffalo, New York, like they treat all of this country. If and the states could give Buffalo to Canada for free, they would. They would. And, and honestly, like if you've been, have you been to Ohio? How many people have been to Ohio? I've been to Ohio. I've been to Ohio. Everybody. I've been to Dayton. I've been to Columbus. I've been to Cleveland. I've been to Cincinnati. been everywhere. I've been to one of those places. Columbus is a much nicer city than people give it credit for. It's a great university town. Um, I Listen, I get that you're surprised, but don't hate on Columbus, the city, because you're surprised a free no, agent signed there. I don't, I don't think it has anything to do with the actual city. Oh, I think, there was, there was a lot. Oh, Maybe people, not for you. Those people are idiots. Yes. Like, I think, I think the shock, the shock should be that Johnny Goudreau signed with Columbus. And that's fair. Because that's, uh. They've never been a destination for stars. No. Ever. And I think it's, it's, it's it, we're lying to say, oh, no, we all expected this offseason Johnny Goudreau would sign with the Columbus and, Blue and Jackets. I, I agree. And in no way am I saying that. All right, Every right. star they've ever had is left. So here's... Yeah. Before we talk <laughs> about how Yarmo pulled this off, let's talk about what the other teams weren't able to do. Except for Wawrenski. He, he was yeah, drafted there. Sure. And Panarin, who was traded there. It's like it's almost like what the Raptors have to deal with the, in, the, in the NBA. It's like, we can't sign you, but we will trade Early for you. Early 2000s Blue Jays. Yeah. We're always able to get just enough stars that were okay in time for them to leave. There you- <laughs> That's a good point. And by the way, those early 2000s Blue Jays would have made the playoffs 10 times over under the expanded rules. But, you know, that's nah. what it was. Well, let's start with some of the teams that Johnny re- rejected. Because mm. Columbus, I think, is the last piece to fall here. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the other teams that he did not sign with. And I want to start not with the Flames, guys. Mm. I want to start with the Philadelphia Flyers. The, the uh, worst run team in the league. Johnny Gaudreau. Maybe was supposed to be a Philadelphia Flyer. Bottom three team in the league in terms of being run. 
Donnie Gaudreau was supposed to be a Philadelphia Flyer. He wanted to be, I think. Mm-hmm. That was the goal. That was, that was number one. I want to be closer to home. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know who he grew up cheering for. Well, he was. He grew up in New Jersey, so yeah. But he wanted to be a flyer on this particular occasion. Sure we'll get to like New it. Jersey. Don't worry, Devils fans. We haven't forgotten. I saw some people doing uh, some geography lessons on where Johnny Goudreau grew up because they're like, oh, technically it's closer to Philly because because they're doing the, the that county area. I forget. I forget what specific. I'm not from the area like i don't know yeah. they're doing like the washington philly new jersey kind of tri-state area right. there. there's a lot of and they're people like, there. technically you know philly's his home team even though it's in jersey i was like i don't get it well also the adorable peasants uh marking how far of a drive it is from <laughs> columbus to new jersey did you see what he signed for they're not driving they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna fly. They're gonna take a thirty-five minute flight and look down at all the pores. <laughs> yeah, do you, yeah. Do you think you, what is he jumping in his his Aerostar minivan right, and yeah. driving out there? Like that's not happening. Come uh, on, guys. Yeah, he's he's Johnny Gaudreau. His He'll Toyota Tracel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, pack up. <laughs> Is there enough? <laughs> there's not enough gear in the Tercel for my my hockey bag and your stuff, honey. I'm sorry. Going to watch Johnny Gaudreau play on the road again. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. I'm happy so. for Johnny Gaudreau. He sure is doing well. But the rest of the family doesn't get to partake in that. Well, what about his family? What if his family moved to Columbus? And who knows? Being and also, close to family is a different uh, kilometer away when you're rich, right? Well, and yeah, good and point. It's Columbus, the first team to ever have 82 home games. Right. You don't spend all your time at home anyway. Yeah. You're on the road half the time. And how many times are they playing Philly because they're in that division? Well, and yeah, a bunch of teams in that division are like two kilometers apart. Like it's yeah, they're um guys, you're no. not you're not looking at reality like Johnny Gaudreau looks at reality. Not enough is being made about how the Flyers mess this up. <laughs> Chuck Fletcher had this in the bag. So here are the factors that likely contributed to the demise as Johnny Gaudreau as a flyer, at least until maybe he gets traded there one day. First off, they got no cap space after blowing their brains out on Tony D'Angelo's weird deal that they didn't need to make. That's a weird deal, right? Dude, yes. like, okay, so was he not heading for unrestricted free agency? He's an RFA. He was an oh, RFA. he was an RFA. Okay, so that's why he was why a Philly... UFA last year and then re-RFA'd. Re- kind of like Kasha. Yes. A little bit. Um, and so... don't worry, we're going to talk about Don Waddell later. Yeah. What a okay. day. I uh, Piece of... Anyway. Um, so, with Tony D'Angelo, like, let's let's forget about the the history and all that. The trade, let's say the trade's not too much. Let's say that's not even the the worst part of it. You give, you trade for a guy and give $5 million a year to a guy who has the same skill set as a guy you already have. You trade for and sign Tony D'Angelo. You're immediately admitting Rasmus Ristolina was a mistake. How many draft picks and prospects did the Flyers give up to sign Rasmus Ristolainen and Tony D'Angelo to over $10 million combined. Robert Hag, a first round pick and a second round pick for Rasmus Ristolainen. Plus a and second, then- third, and fourth for Tony D'Angelo. Are you out of your mind? Yeah. What's the matter with you? And that, not, not, oh yeah, we didn't want to give up a first uh, to dump JVR. That is what screwed up Johnny Gaudreau for you. Well, and here, here's, so yeah. What uh, were you thinking? Number two, and I think we got a member, so we, we mentioned the cap space, you know, blow the brains out on the Tony D'Angelo thing. Number two, hiring uh, John Tortorella. Uh, listen, Johnny, Johnny Gaudreau did well under Sutter, but I don't think playing under guys like Sutter and Torts can be, like I know people love Tortorella, but some people hate Tortorella. Player, uh, and most players really like him. And Torts, but Torts, how does Torts feel about small guys who just do offense? Uh, generally not that great. Although right. he did, he did coach Panarin. Yeah. And, and he's not as yeah. short as but, Johnny Gaudreau. And Panarin like hightailed 60. it out of there as soon as he could. Yeah, you're right. Now, and no offense, Columbus, but that's, you know, that's what happened. Yes. And then you've got number three, and I think this is the most important factor, guys. You've got yep. a directionless franchise. Here's, here's what we Philly. know. We know that oh, Philadelphia. They know. They know. All Flyers fans, the entire NHL can see it. Within 18 to 24 months, there will be a rebuild triggered in Philadelphia. You know this. It will kick off within the next two years. Ownership uh, uh, has to yet has yet to realize that this team's a mess. I don't know how they've been hoodwinked, but my bet is the downfall of Chuck Fletcher has already begun, and it started yesterday when he missed out on Gaudreau, because that's the kind of thing that makes... Flyers ownership go, mm, maybe you're not as good 
And it's not because they're not idiots. The, that family is not stupid. The dude you hired to spend money couldn't. Like that's wow. You you bring <laughs> in Chuck Fletcher to give everyone money. And he gave so many people money that he couldn't give anyone money. Like what kills you? What what kind of contracts kill you in the NHL, Steve? Uh, bad ones. Like, well, like but, we, but we really. talk about the middle what middling, range in the five-ish million. Five to six million. You know what? Andre Palat. Signed for six million bucks, and I didn't see anyone call that contract bad. They, they said it could get rough towards the end. Could get rough towards the, yeah, that's every freaking call. Also, I want to remind every everybody, contract. everybody that said yesterday that the contract could get rough towards the end, I have to remind you that in 2025, the cap's going to jump by like $10 million. I yes. don't think any of these contracts are going to matter. No. And you know who will still be locked up to a deal with a team within the Flyers division? Johnny Gaudreau. That's right. Now... Dude. Now, just so so Johnny Gaudreau's got to look at those three factors. Fact, first off, no cap space. Chuck Fletcher said that was the reason. Let's be honest, that wasn't the reason. They would have found a way to make cap space. Had Johnny Gaudreau wanted to be a flyer yesterday, he'd have been able to sign because you could sign ten percent over. They never offered him a deal because they didn't have the space to I, offer I the deal. They said they were. They said that they were in on Johnny Gaudreau. They were, they were in they were on out. him, but they never had. They never found the money to offer him the nine to ten million dollars that he wanted. But the, they have it. The, they they have it. He, they don't have the room. You to can sign go ten percent over. They have it. They don't have the. They never had the room to offer him a legitimate offer. But for then you term. force yourself into a bad yeah. deal, and they didn't want to move off JVR to make the room. They already signed D'Angelo, so they couldn't make Johnny Gaudreau an offer. All, all they would have actually had to do is take JVR's contract and buy it out. They like, could have. They, they, they didn't want to do that. Let me see if Chuck I can buy Fletcher it out right didn't, now. Didn't said he didn't have the cap space to do the Johnny Gaudreau deal, and the reason he didn't have the cash space is because of his own doing. Man. Like, so <laughs> the idea that Goudreau rejected the Flyers, I think, is a little is we're misconstruing that because the Flyers were never a, a dance partner um, by Chuck Fletcher's own doing. I don't think you can trust Chuck Fletcher's statements on that. I think there was a contract that they that could have been made if if uh, the Flyers had truly wanted to. But I think that what happened was you got an, you got a guy who just looks at that franchise and doesn't want to be there. Actually, because if Johnny Gaudreau says to everybody, no, Philadelphia is my team, they find a way to get that done. So I uh, did you not just say Philly had some cap space? No, I didn't. That was no, I said they've got they can go 10 percent over. They're at 82 happens, million. Yeah. Well, they're actually so they have negative forty eight thousand dollars in cap space. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. But also that's so they what, are over. Yeah, but they got LTIR with Allison Couturier. Oh, f uh, oh. They don't have, but those guys are playing. Guys, uh, Ellis, Ellis is supposed to be there for training camp. Right. The idea, right. though, that they couldn't get this done is what I'm saying. They could have got this done. He didn't want to be there. Uh, Who runs the power play? In Philly? Let's pretend everyone's healthy. Everyone's healthy. Who runs the power play? On the, on the point? Yeah. Provorov. What? <laughs> right? No? So they got Provorov. They got wrist alignment, and I'm pretending everyone's healthy. You, you got Provorov, you have Ryan Ellis, you have wrist alignment, mm -hmm. you have Tony D'Angelo. How many power plays? <laughs> you does can't Philly spread those think around. they have <laughs> same skill set, guys. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm. I would probably have Ryan Ellis as my top guy if he's healthy. If he's which he's he never is not. Tony D'Angelo. That's where he gets his cookies. That's where Rasmus Ristolainen gets his cookies. That's where Provorov... What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Well, and they're trying to move off of Provorov. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah, Which begs the same... Because they don't like him. Asset, yeah. They don't like him. I've heard he's unpopular. They don't like him. And... Are you serious? Yeah. So you have a depreciated asset and someone's going to rinse you. Yeah. So yeah. like Chuck Fletcher's not even done having a bad off season. Like I hope you know that. Right. He's gonna get rinsed on the Provorov deal, and then you're gonna have you're probably gonna have some guys who are unhappy with the amount of power play. To, like what the fuck? I'm used to running the top unit of the power play, and now I'm not even on it. What are you doing? They're they're one of the few teams in the league who would probably be justified running two defensemen on the power play, so they can they can work it out that way. Sure, uh, assuming everyone's healthy, and also assuming if ever assuming everyone's healthy, what what does Ristolainen make? Five point one. Five point one. What the fuck? You're spending like sixteen million dollars on the right side. Mm -hmm. 
Cascasse! Mm -hmm. What the fuck? <laughs> what are you doing? I know I just said what is it, but I, I, don't, I don't understand. I don't Pourquoi, understand. I believe, is what you were looking Pourquoi? for. Pourquoi? Uh, Pourquoi la fuck? Uh, so, directionless franchise. Why the seal? Hiring a defensive-minded coach, probably. And, and that's probably lesser of the three. And then no cap space after, you know, spending it on other people. And not dumping when you could. Because um, to me, is here's how you got to look at it. If you're, you're going to dump uh, JVR, and it's going to cost you the first, would you pay, would you, in a trade situation... Would you trade JVR in a first for Johnny Gaudreau? Uh, ah, uh, I understand what you're saying. Um, no, yes. no, well, yes, no, you no, would. No, the no, answer is yes. Why. No, and I'll tell you why. Okay, yes, because I'm convinced that Johnny Gaudreau makes me good. But in reality, even if the Flyers got Johnny Gaudreau, they just, that's they why he didn't might, go there. I'm telling you, that's why he didn't go there. Squeak into a playoff spot. They're not well, a good team. Ha getting Johnny Gaudreau helps you salvage JVR. I honestly think so. Is it banging in rebounds on the power sure, play yeah, where you he doesn't really have to move? Ideally, yes. but that's yeah. why you don't make the uh, <laughs> D'Angelo move. Dude. Just like, leave, if and they just, left D'Angelo, it would have been fine. Just yeah, leave it alone. This all just comes down to you fucked up the cap, and if you didn't fuck up the cap, you could have had Johnny Gaudreau. Yeah. The number's there, there for everyone to see. I don't. Yeah. Who's who are his assistants? I don't know. Who like his Chuck Fletcher's assistant GMs are not doing their job. Everyone around that team isn't doing their job. And if they are doing their job, they're doing it poorly. Who who do we got? Uh I don't have his I was just looking up how long he's been there. 2018, December of 2018 is when he was. And the uh, Flyers have gotten appreciably better since. Yeah, dude hasn't like been missed a day of work since Clinton and and has been bad the whole time. Like I Guys, I just don't get it. And this goes back to, yeah, I had a bone to pick with him when he was with Minnesota. Well, yeah, and we all remember what a great job he did with Minnesota. All right. Like, this dude has been... Yeah, they're, they're strapped 30-something 30, 30 million dollars in cap space over the next three years because of him. We know... Like, it's crazy. You know <laughs> that I didn't approve a lot of the stuff that Mark Bergevin did. Right. But I can at very least look at him and go, he did a good job with this. He did a good job with this. He had a track record of making to the second, third, and fourth round. Regularly, and they sing the playoffs. Track yeah, like, that. There, there are guys in the sport where I'm like, not the biggest fan of you, but you did this well, did that well, did that well. What does Chuck Fletcher do well? Boo! Get out of yeah. here. We I'm confidently a solid percentage of our Discord could do a better percent, <laughs> could do a better job at the Flyers. Oh, you're, than so, uh, just what's the solid percent? Seventy-five. 97. Yeah, like, yeah. If you've managed to franchise in NHL 22, <laughs> we were talking before the show about how this guy's just been in hockey for so long, and how since 1993, when he was assistant GM of the Florida Panthers, since then he really hasn't missed a year of hockey where he didn't have a job in a front office of the organization. And his track record just isn't there for someone to have this long of a run in the National Hockey League running these teams. And he's also 25 and when, he, he when he got that job. Yeah. What a wunderkind. And now he's 52 <laughs> and he hasn't missed a day of work. <laughs> and and like, even let's pretend it's Flyers ownership. Did you learn though? <laughs> Is what I would ask. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Sorry, continue. What if it's Flyers ownership who's controlling this? Well, just like Minnesota, he's the guy who you hire when you need to do this. When you, when you, when you need a Pinocchio. Friggin, when Craig Leopold needs a fall guy. Yeah. Mm. When you need a, pin, uh, he's the best Pinocchio GM there is. He's, he's a, he's a, he's a puppet. Well, maybe he's not a puppet because if he isn't a puppet, that's worse. Yeah. Because that means he's been in here long enough to know better and he doesn't know better. Well, and even if he is a puppet, you know what most billionaires know how to do? Count. Come on. And this is where what I, are you doing? My point about him losing face with ownership on this one. I think ownership wanted this done. And I think this is how this is how you lose face with ownership. Yeah. They might they might look at that. You never know. The ownership could look at that that group and either not know or not care enough mm -hmm. to to know the difference between whether it's a good team or a bad team. We all know it's going to be a bad team, but there's a lot of owners who are absentee who are like, oh, that's great. Throw the team on the ass. See what happens. Oh, it's bad. All right, later. You're out of here. I think that when you miss, you swing and you miss on a free agent that was a slam dunk who wanted to come, you lose face to ownership. It doesn't matter what else you do. In fact, we've seen situations where owners don't get the guy that they want and the team's a playoff team and the, and the GM still gets sacked. And that's, that's just what happens. So I think in this particular instance, I think if you're Johnny Gaudreau and you say to the Flyers, you're my team, figure it out. 
He's a flyer today. Yep. Dude. But he didn't say that. And there's a reason for that. And he should have been saying that. Now, do you want to do you have one more thing? Now, well, I was just going to say any president of hockey ops or owner should go to their general manager and say, let me see your phone. Go through their call history, and if they don't see Chuck Fletcher, say if his name if his name is not in your recently called numbers by the end of the day, you're fucking fired. Uh, the Devils were the next team. Now, listen, there are a lot of Je- Devils fans who were very upset with my take on the Devils last week that uh, uh, the Flyers might still be better than them. You um, said the Flyers and Columbus. Fl- well, Columbus is. <laughs> Like, without question. And I would have said that before Goodrow. Better than you the Devils? Say that. Better than the Devils, yes. You said, you said that before, yeah, they are before better Goodrow. Than the Devils. They are better than the Devils. Yeah. The Devils are still bad. <laughs> and they still don't have their goalie figured out. And they're still bad. Luke Hughes, or sorry, Jack Hughes, Nico Heischer, uh, Jack Roslovic. Pick the third best. Palat. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> they did and then it's and then after that it's thomas tatar and andreas Jans and eric Halla. good players mm-hmm. this is not a great team yet and i think johnny gaudreau is looking at that and going man dougie hamilton sure had a like i i saw dougie hamilton in a devil's jersey last year oh yeah depressing Van, vanacek blackwood with an un it's better than john gillies and the other guy yeah but and then you know to be fair jonathan bernier was injured most of last year I looked at the Devils heading into last year, and I was like, you know what? They at least prepared, and then you plan God laughs happened. Yes. Right. And yeah, uh, like yeah. worst case scenario, underrated worst case scenario happened to them. Yeah. Sort of. I they'll. I don't know how good they'll be. I think you're underselling them, though, a little I, bit. I, I, think listen, I think they're being I, oversold to me. When, okay? we, when we shit on them in the winter, I was 100% with you, and they, they converted me. They converted me. By being bad? What what results did they have that converted you? Well, they had shitty goalies. I I'm I'm so a believer. The I'm a yeah, that's true. I'm a believer in their future, though. I I agree with you, but right now, as it stands, the Devils are not a good hockey team. Yeah, by but, NHL standards, but they're better than they were six months ago. Fair enough. And did Johnny Gaudreau think that? Because according to Mike Stevens, the New Jersey Devils offered north of ten million dollars. And on a seven-year deal, and he chose less money to sign with Columbus. That's right. So did Goudreau look at that lineup and say, you know what? That boy Adam Wilde's right. I don't think he said I was right, but I think he was like, I am coming off a first-place team in our division. Mm-hmm. We went to the second round. We should have done better than we did against Edmonton, that's for sure. But like, we were unstoppable. Our first line, me on it, 40-40-40 in the goal department. Unreal. And then I got to go to play with that in New Jersey? And and wait a couple years till they maybe get better. I don't know. What about Columbus? Like, does Hold he on. think yeah. Cole Sillinger's fucking Gretzky? Like, <laughs> like, like, maybe he is. I look at Jack Hughes and uh, Heisher, and I'm like, yeah, I want to play with that. I think Jack Hughes more than Heisher. I'm I'm still not sold on Heisher <laughs> as, as like a superstar. He's a good sure. player. I bet is Johnny Gaudreau would make him better. <laughs> yeah, certainly he would. He would for sure. So Devils probably doesn't wait. Here's what I wondered about the Islanders because this is another team that he rejected. Could it be, and I and I say this as not a salty Leafs fan because I actually genuinely think Lou Lamorello was the one of the biggest factors in the turnaround in Toronto and the culture change and the way things used to be. I have to say that. I agree with that. Lou Lamorello also is extremely old school. And I wonder if it gives free agents pause. And I, I, I want to bring this up because mm. he has swung and missed on major, major free agents, most major free agents um, since he got there. I mean, like, Lou took, because he had just got there, almost no heat for losing Tavares. And he should have taken huge criticism for that. It seemed like, I, I think Islanders fans took that as, yeah, they were going to lose him no matter who was in charge. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I, I don't think, think that was made up. necessarily true. No. Um, brand new arena, great young team. But you can't sell Johnny Gaudreau on a team that went to the conference finals two years in a row and missed the playoffs because they spent the first 20 games on the road last year. And you have one of the best young goalies in the league. They also came in at less money. So Andy Graziano uh, reported they offered seven by nine flat. So they're less the money than Columbus. Pretty well, significant. Yeah. Too. Over seven years, you're making over five and a half million dollars less than he took in Columbus, which isn't is insignificant. Yeah. And, and, and it goes to show, and I, I, I think it's, Money is obviously the issue there because he already left about $15 million over the course of the contract uh, on the table by signing in Columbus. But Lou coming in at that number, are you nuts? Mm -hmm. And also, I want to point this out. Andy Graziano with another great tweet, friend of the show. We love Andy. Lou was hired in May of 2018. As far as I can tell, please correct me if I missed anyone. The departures are 
Oh. Tavares, Eberly, Letty, Lang, Hosang, Dal Cole, Komarov, Dehan, Taze, Boychek, who was injured, Halak, and Grice. The additions are Peugeot, Parise, Palmieri, Chara, Green, Varlamov, and Sorokin. Ooh. Mixed. Mixed at best. But I would say the departures outweigh the additions. As good as Peugeot, as good as Varlamov, uh, as good as Sorokin have been. It's not great. Well, and, and like the Barzal relationship appears to be somewhat tumultuous too. Yeah. A little bit. And I just, you know, now you've, and now, by the way, you know what Andy didn't create, uh, didn't add on that? Barry Trotz. Mm -hmm. That's a bad one. Who do they got? Do they have one? Uh, they do. They hired uh, their assistant coach. Oh, oh right, 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 right. And who, who I think is going to have like a different outlook on the offense and that sort of thing. They got a brand new arena. They got an exciting young team. Lane Could Lambert. You, imagine Gaudreau and Barzal together. That would have yeah. been sick. That would have been insane. Yeah, that would have been magical. So, so again, we don't have that. And then here's the most perplexing team that Johnny rejected. It's the Calgary Flames. Now, oh. we'd heard he'd wanted to be closer to the eastern seaboard. But as Steve rightly pointed out, when you're that kind of rich... Yep. Uh, distance doesn't matter as much. It's not as much of a barrier. You can it's, move your parents out there and buy them a house. Calgary houses are the cheap, or like you could buy a mansion for like 2 million bucks in Calgary. And I'm talking like three, 4,000 square feet. Yeah, but we're, we're talking about, well, maybe they don't want to move to fucking Calgary. Though. Well, they got grandkid on the way. So maybe they want to consider that. That's part well, of it. <laughs> maybe that, that, maybe that. I'm not like, kidding. What, what, what I'm saying is it's, we're talking about like a 45 minute flight versus like four hours. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and, and you know what? The travel in the West is harder. Three, four. But Gaudreau left. Guys, it's not a little bit of money, money here. Mm -hmm. $15 million on the table. We're talking about close to 30% of the total contract value he left on the table. Now, you're the money guy here. We're, we're talking about, uh, they were talking about taxes and yeah. everything. Like, he still would have made more. Oh, yeah, and also uh, in Calgary, uh, because of the Alberta tax system, it's only 10%. Your income tax is like 10%. Yeah, it's less than the national average. Way less. All right. Way plus, less. Plus, you're only taxed on 41 of your home games. You only get taxed on the games you play in whatever state you play in or province, you know? Yeah. So um, it's, the tax thing, I think, is a little overblown because like Alan Walsh says, any smart accountant can make that stuff work. Yeah. And there are guys right. who are specifically paid to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm. So part of it might be the fact that it is Canada. Uh, I want to go back to the States. Uh, part of it could be the location. The fact that, you know, like we said, his wife apparently is having a baby this summer. He wants to be close to family. I get mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, but I also, I want to ask that, is that all? Is that really all? Because something seems fishy about this and I have some thoughts and I want to ask you guys stars like, okay, blue jackets fans, like, please do not take offense to this, but stars like Johnny Gaudreau, especially after the season that he had best season of his career, they don't go to teams like Columbus. That doesn't have not in free agency. They have right. no, and not it's not even point. the market. Like Columbus is not a contender. They're not ready to contend. And they're not going to be ready to contend like for a while un unless uh, like they don't even have line a locked up. Their top center is it's like Cole Sillinger or Roslovic. Like, well, I just pointed you, out to you. Flyers had no cap space. New Jersey sucks. The Islanders offered less money and you got to be in the East. But even going to that, that team, like stars don't leave successful teams. Like it's yes. across yes. pro sports. If you're a star on a team and they're on the rise and it's your time to resign, if the team is doing well and you've had the best career uh, season of your entire career, you resign 99% out of the time. It's yep. just such a, it's such a shock. And like, I, I want to know what it is about the team in Calgary. Uh, the management in Calgary that he dislikes so much that he has to leave this on ice perfect situation to go to uh, an unknown in Columbus. Now, I wonder if the two COVID seasons made a lot of players in, and you know he's American as well. I wonder if it made him run for the hills. Yeah. I've oh, Bogosian left because of that. Like yeah. he's, he's Canadian though. Yeah, that's what I mean though. He, right. It's like these guys they could go on the road and go have dinner with their buddies uh, on the road, and then they came to Canada, and you can't leave your house. Yeah, that, yeah but you and, can now. But you can now. But I think some but players I, were like, you know what? I, yeah, I, yeah. The country and the city are kind of the answers that I keep landing on. How about this? Could it be that offering him over ten million dollars a year came too late? 
The last we had heard, they were well north of 10 million, but the previous offer was eight years at 9.5, right up until two days before free agency hit. And you have to wonder, had they made that offer north of 10 million over eight years in February or March, does he take it? Yeah. I think he's probably like, what the fuck? Why did it take? I am Johnny Goudreau. Mm -hmm. I've been great on this team, even when it's been bad, except for the playoffs sometimes. Had some bad playoff runs. We get it. And his last moment there as a flame isn't great. Right. But but I have been through thick and thin with this team. And now, several minutes before I'm an unrestricted free agent, now you come with your best offer. How about you stick it up your ass? Dude, the the I was I was hard on the, you know what, it's time to get rid of Brad Tre Living train. And then they had an amazing season. Well, they performed to what they should have been. And they were the, always this good. The way it ended, and then they lose Gaudreau. Oh. Like, you, you're talking about how Flyers ownership are maybe looking at Chuck Fletcher sideways. Losing faith. What is Flames ownership looking at your living like this morning? To that point. You better get Kadri. The problem for he the He doesn't fl- want to go! No, he, he nicks to trade there. The problem for the Flames right now is that without Johnny... Matthew Kachuk and Elias Lindholm's chances of getting over 40 goals next season are much diminished. I think that's fair to say, right? They have... The chances of them scoring that many goals, they'll score goals. But 40 each? If you're... I I, I think... I think um, Matthew Kachuk... He's not tap dancing. He's pissed, probably, that Johnny Gaudreau is gone. From a negotiation standpoint, just break the bank open. He's a year from UFA, and there are rumors in Calgary... Floating around right now that that uh, what, what keeps happening is people keep going, yeah, but Matthew Kachuk's future. He's a year from UFA, and he doesn't want to go through a rebuild. No, my number, if I'm Matthew Kachuk, is two digits. Oh, yeah. Give, give me one year is what I'm saying if I'm Matthew yeah, Kachuk. Yeah, you're walking me to UFA. Yeah, yeah. well, and True Living literally can't do that. So they either have to trade him this summer or give him way too much money way too much money he could ask for more than Gaudreau got uh they're in an well, awful no, certainly, situation awful certainly spot. he could ask yeah. for that awful certainly spot. i also want to say terrible. that terrible a lot of people don't uh don't remember this because it happened in ottawa no offense ottawa but like it wasn't the top story brady kachuk and the senators that that negotiation was nasty Didn't and the, matthew kachuk hold out too oh sure and keith kachuk time? keith kachuk's been through this they've got good representation they're not fucking around here. No. These guys are out to make as much money as they can, as they should, in the time that they're allotted. Calgary looked like one of the best young, promising teams that's going to dominate for like a f- good five year stretch here if they just lock up the young core. And in within like forty eight hours, it's all come crumbling down. Can I throw out a dark horse team to acquire Matthew Kachuk if, if push comes to shove? Who? Ottawa. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> they would. Like they Chuck could brother. give him. They could give him a lot. They could give him. They could give him and his brother uh, matching contracts. Oh, the I matching think they'd contracts give him and still be well below the cap. They could. They Matthew would have to get paid more than his brother. No, the the only problem with that is their top six looks like it's solid, and they need to re sign a whole bunch of them for next season. So Brady's, and the Brady th- says, "Bring in my brother." I'm requesting where a trade. they need to. <laughs> Brady's got his contract locked up. Yeah, where right. they need to use that cap space to add is their defensive core. Like well, they have one solid defenseman in Shabbat and five guys, and a, and a real guess yeah. on defense or on goalie too. Cam Talbot's. Good. So, yeah, they got they got a lot of saves out of Forsberg. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I loved Anton Forsberg. Yeah. That was a waivers pickup. I know. Oh. Oh. Colin everybody Columbus. could everybody could add him. Well, and how many teams did have him and right. <laughs> lost him? Yeah. So like, it, it, if you're Dorian, you wisely spend that money on defense. The, the, and the reason I bring up Ottawa is I'm looking at Matthew Kachuk and I'm looking at all the leverage he has. The leverage Calgary has is l- look around the league, Matthew. Who has the space for you? Mm-hmm. And the answer is very few teams, and the teams that do don't have the money. Ottawa looks like they're they do. How much money did they just spend? They were one of the biggest spenders. Yeah, you need to save some though. I have a question. Bunch of contracts come up next. Year. I have a question, mm. guys. Mm. It's Matthew Chuck. What about Columbus? <laughs> <laughs> they don't have the space right now. And trade line A to Calgary. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's fun. That's a fun one. Uh, I think Line A is getting moved. I think a bunch of guys are getting moved. I wonder uh, uh, where Calgary goes from here. That management group cannot feel good. Like that is 
that's rejection on a whole next level. And I think Flames fans have a right to be pissed about it. I like, I completely get it. Um, but I also think that you can't lay this at Johnny's feet. He can go wherever he wants. Yeah. It's his, it's his contract right to do it. His reasons don't have to make sense to you. Columbus is still closer. People are like, oh, he said he wanted to go home and I was okay with that, but now I'm not. Um, you don't matter in this decision. And I, and, and, and I, I'm, you know, when Tracy McGrady left, I was pissed. When Vince Carter asked for a trade, man, I was pissed. When Doug Gilmore tr- was traded, I was fucking broken hearted. But he asked for a trade. He asked to get out of here. It's none of my bit. It's I, I, I don't matter in that equation. The, he played out his contract and yes. he had the right. Uh, as Doug a Gilmore UFA. was still under contract. Yeah. <laughs> Goudreau as a UFA had the right to go wherever yeah. he wants. Oh, yeah. The 2016 draft is like the top of it is so tough. So there's Matthews. Okay. Mm-hmm. 60 goal scorer just won the heart. I'd say the Leafs did well. Uh, next pick is Line A. Mm-hmm who was in Winnipeg and was sick and then wasn't sick and then got traded. Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois, who he was traded for, who apparently doesn't even want to be there. He didn't want to be in Columbus, doesn't want to be in Winnipeg. We don't know where he wants to be. Fourth pick, Jesse Pouliarvi, who the Oilers kicked out and then begged to come back and are kicking out again. Number five, Ole Ulevi. Oh, goodbye. Matthew Kachuk, probably going to hold out for the second time now. Clayton Keller. Like, the Coyotes are looking good with that one, actually. Number eight, Alex Nylander. Montreal, Mikhail Sergachev. Smart pick. Out you go. Uh, <laughs> number 10, Tyson Jost, Colorado. Out you go. Dude, that's a rough top 10. It like, is. a really underratedly rough top 10. Not in terms of their bad players, necessarily, but just how they worked out with the teams who actually picked them. Yeah, it didn't go well. Now, a lot of people do. Let's get to the actual question. Why Columbus? I, uh... Last no, man standing? I, Col- it, Columbus? It feels uh, like it. Uh, Blue Jackets fans? Uh, I'm sorry. You can't tell me you're not surprised. I'm surprised. I don't... Are people acting like they're not yes, surprised? Some people are acting like they're not surprised, and I think that's okay, a little ridiculous. all right, all right. <laughs> now, now... <laughs> all right. The other thing is, like... It's July, what, 14th? They're not done. However, um, like even the framework, man. Well, okay, let's talk about the framework. They killed the first round of the draft this year. Mm-hmm. Columbus on the back end is set yes. Go- going forward. Yeah. Not necessarily right now, but going forward, yep. they're set. So if I'm Yarmo Kekalainen, I don't even worry about that. I don't even worry about that. Uh, I get a veteran with big fists um, to help usher them into the future. Oh, I'm starting to understand the Eric Branson contract now. Still bad. Really bad. Yeah, well, Yarmo yeah. signed the best and the worst contract yesterday. Literally. <laughs> literally. Like, no hyperbole. Um, yeah, Johnny Gaudreau must really like Eric Branson. Um Going forward, like, yeah, Cole Sillinger is going to be good. Surely Kekalainen, Kekalainen loves to swing for the fences. Yes. Right? There was the big offer to Panarin, and a lot of people forget that he friggin' offer sheeted uh, Marner. Marner. It's just Marner didn't sign it. He was going to give him like 12 million bucks. He was been, it was 12 it? I, think I thought I it was rem- higher. I, well, I think it's the max, right? It would have made him like the highest or second highest paid player in the league. Yeah. He, like he was offered more than Matthews currently makes. Wild. Wild. So he likes to swing for the fences. I would like to think that he is not done. Uh, he's not done. But uh, I mean, Kekalainen must have really painted a vivid picture of the future for Johnny. Uh like, I'm not trying to be insulting. I don't get it. And I can't. I think I have a pretty good imagination. Well, I, I, think can, I can't picture. I don't know why he I don't know why he did it. The reason I structured this the way I did is because I wanted to run through the teams that were in mm-hmm. and I wanted to run through why they weren't a fit. OK, so you got Flyers, Jersey, Islanders, Flyers, a mess. Jersey, not good. Islanders offered less money than Calgary and then Calgary which, you know, came to him at the last minute. But I think geography is probably the main focus on that one. Although if I'm him and they don't offer the kind of money I want until the last minute, I'm like, yeah, how about how about you guys go fuck off too? Like, I I get that. I understand that kind of like, you know what? 
I'm going to make it's you look also bad. also how negotiations work. What are we... Uh, it is. Deadlines it is. clear the mind and the deadline reached and they offered the contract. I, I still think... I think in that case, though, they were grinding him, right? That nine... They were like, nine and a half is the most we can do. Okay, fine. We can do like 10 and a half, 11. What? Like, that's... Come on. Different people handle different negotiations differently. Um, like, I... Uh, there was an experience that I can recall uh, where someone was told not to take things personally. Hmm. And uh, the person st- had a, a very difficult time with that because your income, your livelihood is extraordinarily personal. Like, oh, it's business. What the fuck? It's it's how I pay for life. What are you talking about? Don't take it personally. Evgeny Malkin, uh, some people said, acted like a baby uh, during his negotiations with Pittsburgh. I think Evgeny Malkin acted like Evgeny Malkin. And I'm not saying that as an insult. He's an extraordinarily emotional player on the ice. Greasy as fuck, actually. Like, really underratedly greasy. But he did to Pittsburgh exactly what he did the last time. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. All right, what do you got for me? Well, Crosby apparently made a phone call, too. As we and knew said, he would have sure talking the last time. <laughs> yeah. And and what groundbreaking thing did Sidney Crosby make in that call? Don't leave. <laughs> I think <laughs> And he did it while uh, making a putt with Nathan McKinnon yeah. in Nova Scotia. I think like, I think also he would, I think Gino was pissed off because he couldn't get that fourth year until the last minute as well. And then he got it. Then he got it. And, and then now you better win. Like, you guys are three old guys got the band back together. You better show us you can still play the hits. It's reunion tour, but, baby. Yeah. Like, but, like, come on. There's, so there was the hot headedness of Evgeny Malkin, but then there's the Russian, like, all right, fine. <laughs> ah. Like, and, it, but not everyone has that. So, like, maybe they did with break Gaudreau's heart. I don't know. With Columbus and, like, what the hell's going on there. Uh, yesterday on the Jesse Blake Sports Report, I tried to liken it to uh, the Tavares deal a little bit, but what I should have compared it to was more so the Panarin deal. Uh, with when New York went out and paid all of that money for Panarin, when they were they had just released their letter to the public about how they're going to go through a rebuild, and I think it was two years Psych! after that yeah. that letter was released, they go out and they sign Panarin to this giant contract, and then we sit here last year, and all of a sudden they outperform all expectations. I could see something similar happening with Columbus, maybe Absolutely. not this season, but the next season. Because if you look at their decor, it's very young. They were 14th, I think, in the league in scoring, and where they struggled hmm. was defense. They couldn't stop anything. Um, I think their expected goals were uh, 26th in the league. So and they got so, a goalie. And what and what uh, Kekalainen did, he's like, okay, we need to help these young defensemen. We need to help Jake Bean on the back end. We need to help Boyquist. I'm going to go out and get a big body. I'm going to go get. Erica Branson. So to his credit there, he filled the need that he needed to do. Maybe the contract's ridiculous, but the guy he needed it there is. And maybe you get Goudreau a year early because this is when he's a UFA. And then it might not be this season, but next year might be the season where everything kind of comes together and we see to the you. rest of the puzzle pieces form. And we're like, oh, yeah, that was a great move getting Goudreau that offseason when yeah. you could get him. We're, t- we're too close to the picture right now. Yeah. And we're looking at Columbus as how do they contend for a cup next season? Yarmo Kekalainen invested in the Columbus Blue Jackets yesterday. We are a team that can get stars. And with Zach Wierenski, and maybe overpaying there too, definitely overpaying there too, we can retain them mm-hmm. as well. Like, people don't understand the long history. Panarin, Rick Nash, dude, Jeff Carter got there and wanted out immediately. Last off season, Seth Jones. Seth Jones. Sergei Bobrovsky was another big yep. one. They don't stay. Whether you draft for them or you trade for them, they don't stay. Wierenski was the first real stay, and Gaudreau was a recruitment. Now you got two. Now you got two. And you know, people want to win. I well, I also yeah. wondered, guys, I want to throw a name in the hat because I think for both Columbus and for Calgary, this could be an option. But less less so for Columbus now. Um, you know, if, if you're going to move line A, you need a finisher. Patrick Kane's name has come up, mm-hmm. Ooh. and I and and I almost wonder for Calgary, like, listen, they've got the cap space. We'll take them not retained, and we'll give you assets. Uh, Patrick for a, for a Kane season. going to Columbus after the Panarin stuff is very funny. 
That would be funny. I'm just going to throw it well, out that it's very. And funny. wouldn't it wouldn't it help you if 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 you're true living? I mean, if I'm true living, you got to the, all the personal issues. I get it. Mm-hmm. I get it. But I think if you're looking at in terms of the NHL GM scope, they're going to say, okay, this guy is an, a phenomenal playmaker, phenomenal hockey player. Who's the guy most likely to replace Johnny Gaudreau with Lindholm and Kachuk? Uh, boy, Patrick Kane uh, could bring those guys back up to 40 goals apiece. Ain't happening. No? Ain't happening. He's got a full no move. Here's so Stay it's, in Chicago it's, then. It's well. Really? Well, Come so on. Chicago's trying to force his hand. There, there are a few really interesting players in the NHL right now, and they all stink. Um, because <laughs> no, 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 it's not. They sorry, not stink. actual players. I mean, I mean players as in teams. Because mm-hmm. there are all these now. There's this weird logjam. Kane and Taves are at some point going to snap and want out. And Chicago, I think they've snapped. I think they want out now. It makes no sense for even if you're going for Connor Bedard. It makes no sense to have these two players on your team. If you were evil, both going to be UFAs next If year. you're evil enough, would you play out your season so Chicago doesn't get any assets and then you're a UFA and you walk? I mean, it's going to involve you throwing away a year of your life. No, you get to play in Chicago. Yeah. What, if, what if you get an injury? And oh, well. What if you have surgery? That, that could happen. That that could happen, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. There's there's Ottawa has a ton of cap space. They don't stink. Seattle, Chicago, ironically, um, Arizona. There are a bunch of teams in the league who still want to do stuff who Anaheim. don't have any room to do stuff. Anaheim is one. Yup, and they bought. With Ryan Strom, that was that was another one I thought was confusing. But at very least, with the Ducks, you look at them and you're like, oh well, they got guys going forward. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And they got a goalie. Yeah, they got, yeah, I get it. I sort of get it. I wonder if there are deals out there for those teams where they look at a team like maybe not the Flyers because they seem to have surrendered. But you know, <laughs> let's let's take a team like the Leafs for example. They're $2 million away from the cap with uh, a 21-man roster. That's tough. $2 million away from the cap, and they still need to sign Engvall and Sandine. If I'm any of those teams, I'm picking up the phone, and I'm calling the Leafs, and I'm saying, what can I do for you? Yeah. What? And like, not even a blockbuster. How can I help you out with Justin Hall? How can I help you out with Alex Kerfoot? Or Sheldon Keefe may physically block Justin Hall from leaving on the airport if he gets traded. Well, uh, he may go to the airport and go, no, Justin. Well, Sheldon, how do you feel about Jake? Maybe Muzzin's time is done. And and you figure you figure that out. So that's just the least. But there are other teams. I I'd be calling up Calgary with a player who doesn't have a full no move. I like your Kane idea. I think he blocks it. He maybe he does. I'm just saying, if I'm true living, I'm making the phone call. Because Here, here's what you, could you happen. need. You need because if you want Kachuk to resign, you got to be like, yeah. well, he's going to be like, who am I playing with? Do I play with a Chicago team that's going to be utterly dog shit, or do I swallow my pride and go to Calgary, where I don't really want to go, but I go there and we at least play fun hockey and go toe to toe with Connor McDavid, go toe to toe with Connor McDavid, and then I leave and make a pile of money right. anyway, and he leaves. It's possible I could see it happening. And, and for true living, it's like to me, this is do or die. Yeah. Like, like if you're if you're worried about three seasons from now and you're Brad True Living, you're you're thinking too far ahead, man. You gotta be thinking about right now. Oh, they should be trying to win next year. They yeah. should absolutely be trying to win. There's a really interesting log jam in the NHL right now that I think is gonna explode at any minute. I think so, and I think it's gonna happen when Nazem Kadri signs. Which I has not happened yet. I don't know if he can sign until that's all figured out. I think he's probably the piece in a lot of team situations, right? I think he's going to end up back in Colorado. I thought no. I thought Palat was going to stay in Tampa, I'm not going to lie. They're still in touch. They're still in touch. Is the room there? Colorado and Nazem. Oh, oh. I was like, Palat, no, that ship sailed. <laughs> no, no, I know that. I mean, who needs a number one or two center? And who has the space? 3.9 mil in projected cap space for Colorado on cap. You'd have yeah, to move figure it out. out. 
The, well, and there's another part of the log jam. So maybe part of the log jam is teams calling up Colorado going, ha ha, like we know you're kind of screwed here and they're trying to beat Joe Sackick in a trade and it's not necessarily going well. And Joe Sackick is a pretty good trader. Like Calgary is you such got- an obvious fit for Nas and he doesn't want to go there. Like what, you can't force him. What if he doesn't um, want to go? What if, if, and if you got a little bit of a discount from Colorado, let's say, you know, Nas wants eight, they can offer him seven and a half. They've got 4 million under the cap right now. Who's this Calgary? Colorado. Colorado. They have to move out at that point, two and a half million dollars. They can do that. But then you have the McKinnon deal you're trying to work through. Right. You need, to, you need to do that extension this summer, I guess. Yeah, but do you not That's say $12 million? Fuck it, we'll figure it out next summer. Because yeah. let's get the band back together and win this cup again. The best teams don't do that. And we saw that yesterday with the, the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are the least fucking around. I'll, we'll, wow. we'll get to them for you know, sure. No, I know we will. But they paid a fucking fortune for some guys that I'm like, mm, yeah. the, I don't know. <laughs> the I don't know. 19 team, no uh, trade list for Eric Johnson is probably not helping. Because that's $6 million you could move out. But 19, 19 teams. teams. Who's going to pay six million bucks for Eric Johnson, too? Well, that's what I'm saying. That could have got you a uh, nod. Yeah. Every team's got that, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Very true. Yeah, yeah. It just it happens. Now, um, so yeah, Nazem Kadri signing. Who knows when that's going to happen? Could be a couple of days. Could be as soon as this podcast is posted. Because <laughs> well, oftentimes it will be. And how many unreal free agents who shouldn't be free agents right now because they weren't, weren't qualified don't have teams yet? Yeah. Sonny well, Milano doesn't have a team. Um, so let's get into uh, Brennan Manel. Brennan, Brennan Manel. Where's Brennan Manel? <laughs> Steve, can you tell us about? Is do you he have still on the Flyers? He's, uh, a, he's a Chuck Fletcher acquisition. Probably, here, let me look. <laughs> can you text him? <laughs> yeah, probably could. Smart ass. Probably could. All right. We're all getting older every day. That's, science. That's how time works. Yeah. You know what else is science? NAD supplementation which is a part of your routine it needs to be a part of your routine as you age Um, elysium health is one of the most trusted sources for nad supplementation their product basis is clinically proven to increase levels of nad by 40 percent safely and sustainably in your body they have a dozen of the world's best scientists seven of them are nobel prize winners founded by a renowned researcher you can you know that this is like the best as a part of your age routine. And again, like I said, we're all getting older every day, aren't we? Science. Smartest thing I've ever said. So go to trybasis.com slash SDP and enter that code SDP at checkout for 10% off basis prepaid plans as well as other Elysium products. That's trybasis.com slash SDP. Use the code SDP at checkout to save 10%. Thank you, Elysium Health, for sponsoring this episode. So here's the thing with watches. And I've never fully understood the whole watch fixation, but there's a lot of people that love very expensive watches. Love I a like watch. a good watch. I think it completes the outfit. Mm. But do I want to spend that much money on it? Because the watch prices are kind of crazy for something that your phone literally does. <laughs> yeah. Your phone literally you tells You don't really time. buy a watch for the time part no. in 2022. Yeah, but, you know, here it is on my wrist. No, that looks stupid. So here's the thing. The phone on your wrist. And it's the wrong stupid. way, too. You want to look put together. You want to look great. You don't want to spend an obnoxious amount of money for it. Watches from Movement are the ones for you. They got the look and quality of the extremely expensive watches from the department store, but they cost a fraction of the price. And you get a beautiful watch right to your door. Ship there for free. And if you don't love it, you ship it right back for free. 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 Now, if you want to join the movement, and you should... And you want to get 15% off, free shipping, free returns, go to mvmt.com slash dangle. Again, that's mvmt.com slash dangle. Complete that look. Don't break the bank. It's movement. Um, uh, let's get into the day that Don Waddell had yesterday. Holy shit. We'll start with Pacioretty. So first off, you got to remember that the Don Waddell context has to include Tony D'Angelo. The Tony D'Angelo trade mm. was a stroke of genius because it gave him a bunch of assets that he can then flip around and use at the trade deadline. He doesn't need those picks for drafts. He needs to win. That team needs to win. So he got Max Pacioretty and Dylan Colhan from the Hurricanes. Sorry. Uh, sorry. From the Vegas Golden Knights for nothing. No, future considerations. Future considerations to the uh, Carolina Hurricanes social team, rightly honored, which was hilarious. Adam. It was good shit. Adam, listen, fuck all this. 
When's the next Asian provocateur? I don't know. I don't know. Alan has... Uh, Al, I, I left Alan alone this week. I'm like, it, you're busy. So did I. But when is the next Asian <laughs> provocateur? Patches, uh, 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 Jan Ruta signed yesterday Perron with the Penguins. went to Detroit. Perron went to Detroit. The only the, signing Mark with the Andre Blues Fleury? 80 times. Yeah. Very, very good signing. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Who yeah. negotiated People don't like that Perron because of that flying elbow. But I tell you, man, that guy can play... Fucking hockey. He's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, you know that um, Matthew Kachuk's, uh, well, Keith Kachuk um, was was around when Perron had his first camp and he tells the story on the actual podcast. That's right. Where he like went after him in practice. He's like, stop fucking trying so hard, man. Like, can you fuck off? Like, you're making us look bad. Did Keith Kachuk, who once <laughs> failed a team physical, was telling the rookie to not try so yeah, hard? Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Like, I don't think... Allen's too upset that Patches is now in Carolina. Well, he has such a great relationship with the Golden Knights. <laughs> um, the Golden Knights traded Max Pacioretty, who was injured a lot of last year, but still really good when he was in the lineup. And Dylan Colhan to the Hurricanes. Coglin. 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 Yeah. Great puck moving defenseman, young guy. Depth defenseman. And he can mature. I was looking. So I watched him <laughs> doing Conklin highlights yesterday because oh, I wanted God. to know about him. And he's he, the, the Golden Knights were very happy because he put on about like ten pounds of muscle um, in the midseason last year. And he's he's he um, he models his game after Petra Angelo and who was on the team there. And mm-hmm. he was like really happy to be a knight. And uh, he could have a bright future in the NHL. And then the uh, Golden Knights moved him. So that's have my th- Dylan Conklin <laughs> analysis. Have either of you ever worked retail? Well, uh, retail, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Uh, I've never, Shop, never, Shop, Shop, I've never like you worked retail. the till. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So I worked the till at the zoo, and yeah. I struggled with counting. Oh, me too. I never hit zero. I uh, never hit my zero. I hated counting out. It was, yeah, it's it the was worst. The worst. But one of the things I remember in training is they prep you for scams, and <laughs> there was a popular scam where a guy would he'd bring like a hundred dollar bill. Or mm-hmm. something like that. And he'd be like, can I get change for this? Mm-hmm. And he'd ask for specific denominations and he would take them and he would count them and he'd be like, oh, this is wrong. And like he would just change so money would change hands so often and so confusingly that you couldn't keep track of it. And before you know it, the guy's walking off with like 150 bucks after giving you $100. I think the Carolina Hurricanes looked at the Vegas Golden Knights and said, these fuckers don't know how to count. That is uh, who better personifies that scam than the Vegas Golden Knights. Well, I oh man, a boat's a boat, but Jack Eichel could be anything. It could yeah. even be a boat. Like it, it, he, they've. We all agree they have great talent. Mm-hmm. Could even be a contender. Mm-hmm. Um, you lose the Vesna winning goalie for nothing. And Max Pacioretty, who you gave up Nick fucking Suzuki for, for nothing? Well, it goes you back further than that. Do you, have, do you have the list? Yeah, let's trade, yeah, yeah. Let's trade tree this. Because yeah. remember what they gave up to get Tatar from Detroit. This is what it gets. second and third! That's Ken Holland's best trade in Detroit. Oh! First, second, and third for Tatar. And then Tatar, Suzuki, and Norlander. Uh, Norlander, excuse me. Yep. For Pacioretty. Norlander was the pick. And Pacioretty for nothing. You stink. You stink. Stink. Boo. They'll still probably be good. But I, you got to, if you're thinking. Yeah, but there's no. Here's what I was thinking. Here's what I was thinking yesterday. I'm like, if I'm Eichel or I'm Petrangelo, I'm like, God, fuck. Are you serious? Yeah. I would be really mad. I saw a great tweet. It was the the longest, <laughs> the longest tenured uh, uh, Vegas Golden Knight was 48 days. <laughs> Dude, it's Riley Smith. It's the two Florida guys. It's Riley Smith and Jonathan March. So and who the hell else? Yeah. It was a day one. They just got here. Is William Carlson still there? Yeah. William Carlson. There you yeah. go. I mean, really, they don't need to be like this. We keep saying this. <laughs> William Carrier as well. Let's not forget oh, the, car- uh, the Carrier dog. Oh, yeah. yeah. He carries <laughs> the team. Uh, this deal was made, to, by the way, to make Vegas cap compliant. If you remember, they tried to trade to Donoff. He said no, and they were like, what? You have a no trade? Um, <laughs> there's, also, there's no situation. They could win the cup next year, and it still, it still is poor asset management. Will not have made sense that they lost Pacioretty and Flurry for nothing. Also, do we mention that the Canes got Brent Burns as well? Yeah. Salary retained. Are, yeah. we, are we moving off Golden, Golden Knights? No, no, we're staying on oh, this, okay, but, okay. but I just want to throw that out there. Don Waddell, as I remember, he's still the most fun GM in the league to watch. 
The guy is an absolute gangster. There's no, he's amazing. Who's Buddy, who's his assistant GM? They need to hold on to him. Um, oh, fuck. He used to be big on hockey Twitter, and now he's the assistant GM with the Hurricanes, and he's just rinsing teams left and right. And they got Palat! Not Palat. No. They Kasha! Don't. Oh, yeah. The Kasha thing is uh, CJ dropped a bomb on Trade Center uh, yesterday on TSN. Because when the Kasha deal came in and the desk was reading it, Eric Tulski. CJ decided. Eric Tulski, to, thank you. CJ decided to throw out the note that the Toronto Maple Leafs offered Kasha that exact deal that he took with the Hurricanes, and he decided to go with the Hurricanes. I mean, look at them. I don't blame him. Look at them. Neither do I. No. Don't blame him. Not at all. No. I also think he'll play a bigger role on the Carolina Hurricanes yep. than he will in Toronto. Yep. Mm, and I, maybe, think, I don't think he'll have to. Yeah, similar role, similar role, and like we we also got to remember, like he's got a long road back. Like, yeah, and they still have room. Those fuckers. <laughs> yeah, that's what, I mean. that's what I mean. So so staying on the Golden Knights, Jesse, because you wanted to say, what did you want to go? Yeah. So so there was a a quote from a Sean Shapiro athletic article that was making the rounds yesterday. He he talked to a bunch of unnamed sources around the league uh, towards the beginning of the season, and one of them said about Vegas was this: Vegas treats you great until they don't. They've gone from the team of opportunity, the golden misfits, to the evil empire. As an agent, you have to warn your guy that he's expendable as soon as the salary cap doesn't fit with the plan. Look at what happened with Marc-Andre Fleury. I think as long as they win, they'll avoid problems. But if they don't, if they have a losing season, watch out. They also, this f- season- also don't mention, don't forget to mention Nate Schmidt in there too. He's yeah. a part of it. The, li- the list runs so deep. And this is a team that has thought just time and time again ah we'll go get this guy a big cap hit we'll figure it out later and all of that now we're slowly seeing it bite them in the ass well and won't robin leonard not start the season with them yes he yeah, was he's gonna be uh, surgery. Gonna be what out. about brossois 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 he's around i, I don't know if, he'll be, if he was on ir to end the year right well because what if they start next season with a tandem of logan thompson and michael hutchinson I'd say great. that limits their Stanley Cup ability. It's like, not great. Not great. Like, I do I do actually like Logan Thompson. I think that's a good contract mm-hmm. for them. But, like, the Jack Eichel deal is something that's directly cost you Max Pacioretty, Alex Tuck, Peyton Krebs, Dylan Coughlin, and the 16th overall pick oh this year. Oh, my God. And, that's a and lot that's when you put it like that. And you know what's funny, though, is when, when they made the Eichel deal, and, I mean, when they got Petrangelo, too, when they made the Eichel deal... The whole hockey world went, does the salary cap not apply to them? And yesterday was proof that actually it does. So if if I said, hey, you'll trade those five assets for Jack Eichel, you say no. But that because they don't have any foresight to, hey, the, <laughs> we have to build a team under the cap. Ask Donov if he's got a trade list. Uh, like, the, the, the asset management is just awful in Vegas. Also, and they need, I, to, they need to really fix that when, system. When you think about it, I just want to rewind it. I know this is going hyper-focused on something. But when you look at the Donov trade from Ottawa to Vegas, do you not, not just in hindsight, but even at the time, I was like, it's a good pickup, but why? <laughs> Yeah, I know. What like, you mean. why did you mm-hmm. get him? I really did you? You needed a twenty goal, five million dollar player. Is that what it was? Here, here's my question for for NHL teams at the very tippy top, circling mm-hmm. or cycling through the same 40, 45 men. Yep, men's men's. What do you have to lose by picking someone different? Half of these guys who have Ooh. been in the league for years don't know the fucking rules. Or how to count. Well, I would wonder too, like, you know how they interview players? They're like, you know, before they're drafted, right? They're like, well, what's, you know, how did our team do? Like, They'll ask you about like their team too. They're like, if the mm-hmm. Leafs are interviewing you, they'll be like, how did we do? Mm-hmm. Where do you think we could improve? And they'll be like, and then what, what animal would you be and why? Stuff like that, right? Weird <laughs> shit. When you're interviewing a GM, beyond just the GM's plan, would a quiz on the cap system be a relevant thing? Like, what if I just threw out, like, if I got, I would be like, Brandon Pridham. Okay, Brandon, listen, can you give me a a stumper? Give me a, give me a multiple choice on this aspect of the cap. And if the the guy gets it, uh, maybe I'll consider him. If he doesn't, um, he's out. Like, I would want, I would want, if I'm a billionaire and you're running my five to seven hundred million dollar franchise toy, toy, I'm going to want somebody who knows it. And if, and if you don't know it a hundred percent, 
who's your guy that knows it like Brandon Pridham knows it? You ever go driving and you're like, how many people am I on the road with right now who would fail their like G test? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many, like I, I saw a TikTok recently. It's um, if you're making a left-hand turn, the, the, the guy asked his co-host this. He goes, if you're making a left-hand turn, right. which way should you face your wheels? Uh, a left-hand turn? Yeah. Like, are you in the intersection? You're in the intersection waiting to make a left-hand right. turn. Which way do you face your wheels? You, you do it right. You do the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like straight. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. You don't, if you, if you face them left and you get hit from behind, you get pushed in the intersection. Right. How many of you, yeah. So if you're making a left-hand turn, your wheels are facing left and you get hit from behind, you go into oncoming traffic. How many of you just learned that for the first time? A lot of people. Turn in your license. <laughs> but but that, like that to me is that's GMs. All right, explain like, how this okay, relates. <laughs> okay, because you've had the job for years, yeah. and you either never knew the rules or forgot. Ah, you need updated. You need you need you want, to update you check, your information. You want to send Chuck Fletcher to GM school? A little brush yes. up. Yes, it's like expecting Kelly McCrimmon. Kelly McCrimmon. It's like I know, I know, it's, it's Kelly McCrimmon, but it, coffee doesn't stay hot. You know, <laughs> and and I maybe Kelly McCrimmon's lost his touch or like we know the, the GMs need to regularly be emailed, mass emailed the rules. I'm sorry if you have a group and you're making mistakes like that, the group has failed. It's not even just one guy. Well, like what the Vegas Hire general manager. But you do they listen to, to this person? But I also have to say, Steve, you can have those people around. But if they're not, if you're not going to listen to them, yes, and you're just going to be like, "Fuck it, I'm doing it anyway." Not much, you, you know. Yes, I guess, quote unquote, the group fails, but it comes down to the leader. Yeah, Kelly McCrimmon calls that shot, and as long as George McPhee is happy with Kelly McCrimmon, it's going to continue. Kelly, it's not the dub. Well, tell George that. It's and the thing the is, is that these guys aren't going to care because they're going to get fired and uh, at some point because everybody does. I'm not saying they're getting fired this year, but they get fired and then everybody goes, well, Vegas has a shitty reputation, but it's not my problem because I'm not there anymore. They're, they're running Vegas like the like a WHL team. There's a cap here, man. Yeah. There's and, a cap here. There's lots of money at stake. And it's you can't keep doing this. They would tell you that it's ruthless. I would tell you that it's beyond ruthless. It's stupidity. It's just, it's just stupid. And like, I understand ruthlessness. I also understand ruthlessness. Like, it's just like, I'm going to go out and be stupid to be stupid. Like, really, it's like, uh, you know, okay, there's, there's, you're in the, you're in the line of battle and people are shooting a bunch of stuff at you. You can stand up and run directly at the gunfire or, which is brave, <laughs> but know. stupid, or you can do the brave thing and sneak around and try to take it, take out that turret. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's just, it's one of those where sure. I just feel like Vegas is like, you know what? Everybody rise up. Let's go. We're going over the trench. It's crazy. I can like, and the, again, the strangest thing at the end of the day with Vegas is the team's good. Oh, sure. The team's good. But they're, they'll be better when their goalie plays. Also, they fired their head coach too. We got to remember that. Yeah, who'd they? Oh, DeVore. Bruce Cassidy. They went out and got mm -hmm. really good hire. Great coach. Like, honest to God, they could win the Stanley Cup. Mm -hmm. what, Still shitty asset management, dude. Which just goes to show the only reason that the Stanley Cup is won in any given season is because someone has to win it. Let's talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> what? What do you got, Jesse? Is that no, the cap situation? Funny. No, it's yeah. true. Yeah. Like, a team, the Vegas Golden Knights could win the Stanley Cup next year that means they're the best team in hockey and they genuinely suck at what they do yep they're not good at making a hockey team and they might have made the best one that's tom, a problem tom paraska is still there that's general manager. we right? love tom yeah tom, who i came hope on, they fucking listen to him who came on this show one time once upon a time tom's sure a really did. nice guy he um, very shortly after got hired too. uh the leafs uh are great uh the leafs get <laughs> <laughs> The Leafs get Ilya Samsonov, a 25-year-old goaltender who had a bad year with the cap, so he was not tendered. But if you look at his last three seasons, um, not so bad. I mean, like, listen, he in 2019-2020, lockout, or not lockout, oh, thank God, um, <laughs> COVID-shortened season, um, he was 16-6 and six with a 9-13 save percentage. 
The next season, 18, sorry, 16 and six. Yeah, 16 and six. The next season, he's 13 and four with a 902. Last year, 23 and 12, but his save percentage was Jack Campbell-esque, 896. Not great, uh, but he's 25 and he does have great tools. And it seems like it's what the Toronto Maple Leafs... Yeah, it seems like what the Toronto Maple Leafs have done is they said, we're betting on two guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hopefully one of them hits. Now, this is not a good argument, but if you go back to 2018 and 2019... And you said an organization had both Matt Murray and Ilya Samsonov. You'd be like, holy shit, that team's going to be unbeatable. What a group of geniuses. What a group of geniuses. <laughs> now we're a few years later and like it seems like the hockey world is clowning on this team. Well, last uh, yesterday on TSN, and you wouldn't have seen this, no. uh, they were like, how would you rate the Toronto Maple Leafs in terms of their goaltending against all the other Canadian teams? And most of the people there had them at seven or, or six. They had them like seven consensus. Yeah, but like where were they last year and Probably how did it go? Five or four. Jack <laughs> last Campbell year. It wasn't was, great. He was one of the, I, I, there's a lot of revisionist history going on. The one was, oh, I was watching TSN and they were telling me Jack Campbell was a Vesna candidate and now he's a bum. Guys, he was a Vesna candidate in November. Yeah, he was month. very literally a Vesna candidate, uh, and candidate like a, to make Team USA in the Olympics. He was an All Star starter. Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah that's was how much. That's how much the world changed. He was a Vesna candidate uh, and All Star starter. All Star starter and was potentially going to make Team USA at yes. the Olympics. And then what happened? There were no fucking Olympics for the NHL players. Also, and, and, and then he sucked. And then he, and then he <laughs> sucked. Then he was and then he sucked. <laughs> and he was injured. Yeah. No, no. The more no. Well, the point I'm trying to make is shit changes. Oh. The shit changes. We also, he was going to go to the Olympics, and then he wasn't good enough for the Olympics, and also the NHL didn't go the to the Olympics. The revisionist history is also leaning into how long Jack Campbell has been a starter in the NHL. Five minutes. A lot of people are acting like Jack Campbell's been around and been proven and been doing this. No. I the think year Jack before Campbell was last, better than he showed. The Canadian division season was his first season ever doing As this. As a starter. And he was and, wicked. And when they picked him up, he was the throw-in. Yeah. Like, no, they, they got him... Because uh, they got him because they Michael Clifford. Hutchinson sucked. Okay. No. they. I think Clifford was the throw. I think they wanted both. Okay. I think they wanted both. But it was no, a low buy. A what it cost right. them. But re- Jack Campbell was acquired to be Michael Hutchinson's replacement. That's how hard the Leafs lucked into this guy. They did. Now, the other one that I saw was the Leafs are spending more on goaltending than last year. And it's worse. You can't tell me that's not bad. Now... I understand that the Leafs had Peter Morazic for 3.8, which was bad. And they had Jack Campbell for 1.65, which was stellar. Crazy, crazy, good, reasonable. Yes. Who available for 1.65 was Jack Campbell? Nobody. Nobody. Not even Jack Campbell. Not even Ilya Samsonov. No, did you see? Did you see what the Edmonton Oilers offered Jack Campbell? Five years, $25 million. It was more than 1.65. Yeah. 1.65 for Jack Campbell was off the table. So don't focus on what the Leafs spent on goaltending last year versus this year. The way the market shook down or shook out, it, it just wasn't there. It just wasn't there. And you know, the funny thing is they should have spent less. Mrazek was a bad bet and it cost them 13 spots in the draft. And now they're making two bets and people are wondering if both are bad. The Leafs won in spite of terrible goaltending. Like, that's what I keep coming back to when I keep reasoning myself with this deal. Is like they were, they had awful goaltending, awful safe percentage, and they were one of the top teams in the league. Like, didn't Morazic have a winning record? Did he? I don't know. I don't How know the about fuck? That. How did he pull <laughs> that, that off? He was unusable. All right. He was unusable for a while. He had like a few good games. So. It's a funny point that, like, even if the Leafs goaltending sucks, I hope it doesn't, but even if it sucks, they still had a winning record. Jack Campbell was 12 and 6 with an 888. That's Mrazek. Oh, sorry, Jack Campbell. Uh, Peter Mrazek, you were asking. He was 12 and 6. 12 and 6 with an 888. The Leafs won games and they got no stops. So I'm less worried about the goaltending and I'm worried about them just doing this again. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I, oh man! Like, I, listen, I, I think I think what it is is you need a nine oh five all year. Yeah, that'd be an improvement. All year. It'd be an improvement. It'd be an improvement. And uh, uh, and and I, I did want to bring this up though because I thought 
Um, because of the Matt Murray move, a lot of the articles written about the Matt Murray move got buried because free agency was like the next day, right? right. It was real quick. Right. But Justin Bourne had, um, he didn't have 32 thoughts, but he had 10 and they were all on the Matt Murray trade. And I wanted to bring up two of them. Okay. Okay. We read, a, or the same ones, because we read a couple on, uh, Wednesday, Tuesday show, right? I don't believe so. I don't remember that, but okay. this is this is the duality <laughs> because this came out. Yeah, I guess it came out Tuesday, but I don't think we. I don't think I had it in time for Tuesday. I don't know. This week has been a hell of a month. So if I did read this out, I apologize. But this is the duality of, and this speaks less to Matt Murray and more to the Leafs' psychology in terms of their management group. Okay. okay. Number three, Dubas is either winning or going down with his people, which you kind of have to respect. He says, Dubas just promoted three people to AGM, all of whom got their first pro jobs through him. Murray is yet another player from the Sioux that he's brought in. His people are, uh, uh, his people uh, from there are littered throughout the Leafs organization. It's almost as if all outside ideas and theories finally drove him nuts. And he's just decided to go with the people that he's worked with in the past. It's peop- his, his people are bust. So win or lose, at least he can sleep well knowing he went uh he went about it his own way then number four the level of hubris in that line of thinking is a problem Mm. i don't know at this point if this needs much explaining the sue thing is getting a little ridiculous now to believe that all the best people that you've previously met or had some tie to feels weird uh for someone who was sold as the new ideas guy at the start of his tenure which is true uh it's great uh to like and trust those you've come across but to lean so heavily on them implies you're missing something in all the other people out there. And I thought that was interesting because, yeah, you do have to respect, listen, this is his team, this is his guys. But we were so, we were told that this is a best idea guy, yeah. new idea guy. And, like, they do have Haley Wickenheiser. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brandon Pridham, I don't think, was in the Sioux. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's a outside-of-the-box sort of Did higher. any other team, and I, I, I like Dubas, and I'm saying this, but did any other team call about Matt Murray? uh buffalo okay buffalo <laughs> buffalo and maybe edmonton mm-hmm. actually probably not edmonton why would edmonton call they yeah had because, jack campbell yeah they fucking had jack campbell two weeks ago it, please find them like jesus yeah this, now, this is so bad now matt murray could be great i'm rooting for matt murray I mean, I, I, yeah, you're what? rooting for your hockey team. I'm rooting but. for your hockey team, but I'm rooting for the guy as a person. He seems like a good person. He's gone through a couple hard years, lost his dad, injuries, didn't love the situation in Ottawa. Man, that guy was fucking phenomenal in Pittsburgh. But you, you are getting a sense now of the mentality of the Leafs organization as it stands currently. And as it stands currently, as you've always said, Dubas loves his guys. And the problem in the past with previous Leafs um, uh, GM groups and if you're not old enough to remember this, I get that. But I was here more than eight years ago on this show when the previous Leaf group liked their guys too much. And they were wrong. <sighs> They're not done. They're not done. They're and not I, done. I like what they did. I like... It's I the like, most encouraging part. I like the Sam Sonoff thing. I like most of what they do. It's such, like their it's team a is so good bet. And it's a good team. I don't understand why people... Like, people were trying to view the Leafs negatively. And and that's fun. It's well, fun for people outside of Toronto. They love that. Come on. Yes, I let, understand let them have that. that. But also, you don't need to try. Like, there are... Listen, it's risky. It's risky. Murray hasn't been good mm-hmm. consistently uh, and healthy consistently. And Samsonov hasn't been good in recent memory. You don't need to bend yourself into a pretzel. Samsonov is... They they have a goalie who played 44 games last year, locked up to less than $2 million, who's going to be an RFA at the end of next year. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Where's the part where that's bad? Yep. Can someone please point me? Whereas Edmonton just committed five years to a goalie who's played uh, more than 50 games zero times, has played more than 45 games once, has played more than 40 games once, has played more than 30, 30, uh, uh, 35 games once, and more than 30 games twice in his entire career, and he's over 30. You do have to put that in perspective, yeah. and I love Jack Campbell, but you do have to say, what's the bigger bet? Is Matt Murray, with a couple years left, the bigger bet, and Ilya Samsonov in that? Or is Jack Campbell and the actual commitment of five years and $25 million the bigger bet? I think the bigger bet's the one the Oilers took. Well, and the Oilers are going to get better in net. Uh, Regardless. Skinner's going to, yeah. Well, I mean, 
Jack Campbell is a better option than Koskinen or ancient Mike Smith, Mm -hmm. in my opinion. And they're also going to have Stuart Skinner. The other thing was the cost of goalies. So the, the teams who didn't spend on goaltending missed, Mm -hmm. they missed out. New Jersey went out and got two. That was smart. That, that, yeah, I, I know it's too much money probably for Kemper and they go out and they get Vanacek and neither of those guys are really world beaters. Kemper, except, Kemper went to the Except cast. Kemper. Oh yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. It's Blackwood and Vanacek in uh, My Jersey. bad. Fuck. Why do I keep confusing the Devils it's and a, Caps? Because they're red. My, yeah, that's probably it. Um, no, so the Devils have Blackwood and Vanacek. I think my point still applies. And neither of those guys are world beaters. And Kemper is not a world beater, except he just beat the world. Yeah. Yeah. He is literally uh, the reigning Stanley Cup champion of starting goaltenders. Um, but like the teams that didn't get a goalie, like they kind of missed out. And isn't it funny that two years ago, goalies were like the lowest. No one gave a shit. No one gave a shit. And they were available off the, the bargain bin. And now like it, it was better to be the bell of the ball amongst goalies than anyone, anyone else. Mm hmm. Anyone else? No, the so the Oilers, is it too much for too long? Yeah. Are they better and contenders because of it? I think so. Oh, yeah. I like Stuart Skinner a lot, too. I do like Stuart um, Skinner a lot. I'm not nuts about that back end. Well, well let's get to that in a second, though. Yeah. I want, let's get back to Toronto. Uh, Obey Kubel also signs in Toronto. He's the guy who famously dropped the Stanley Cup live on TV, which and is great. Broke it. He should, uh, if the Leafs do win. He should spike it. Um, oh, Adam yeah. Gaudet also comes over from Vancouver, I believe. And he... Ottawa. Ottawa. He was in Vancouver for a long time. Likely headed for the Marlies. Uh, but could be a guy that's like a depth option for them. They are rebuilding their fourth line, which they desperately needed to do. They, You know, Jason Spezza was great. Uh, Simmons was good when he started. Not so great anymore. Thornton was slotted He'll in. There's there. a few other... I just... They need to they need to have that fourth line have a new identity because they tried the scoring thing. It worked in the regular season, and then Jason Spetzer turned out to be the only guy scoring in the playoffs. Like it's not it's just they gotta figure out what they're doing with that line. I I uh, I'm I'm not gonna pass judgment just yet because there's still so much work to do. Um they Duba said he wanted a physical right handed D. Um they are in on Zach Aston Reese. They lost out on Nola Chari. Mm-hmm. Um, Zach Aston Reese would be a really interesting ad. Well, and it's obvious what kind of player they want. Oh, they got Malgin too. Dennis Malgin. We yeah. forgot about that. Carlo, but, uh, Carlo Koliakovo just almost lost his mind with that. I don't know why. He's what? signed a league, man. Yeah, like, and he was like the leading scorer in the Swiss League. Whatever, man. <laughs> with like, signing Malgin? Malgin. He's like, I can't believe this. And it's like, everybody's like, who cares, man? What? They like, had his rights. They yeah. retained his right. Malgin would have been a leaf the last two years. He went to Switzerland because of COVID. He's from Switzerland. He wanted to play in Switzerland. Okay, you want to be a uh, the twelfth or thirteenth forward on a team where you're essentially in prison for two years, or you want to at least be home and in prison. Yes, in a beautiful mountainous prison. Yeah, <laughs> where you're going to score a lot. You know what? This is kind of nice. Yeah, where you're going to score a shitload and you're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, he, he led he led a Swiss team in scoring, then he went to a different Swiss team and led them in scoring for two years. Sounds terrible. And he's not going to be that in the NHL, but we kind of know what he's going to be in the NHL because he's played 196 games in the NHL. So he's almost, hey, he's almost a pensioner. 200 mm-hmm. games. He's, I'm pretty sure... Despite the last two seasons, he still played more NHL games than Mason March. And he's what, 27? Uh, something like, he, no, he's not even 27. Not he's that still old. pretty young. Yeah. He's younger than Mason Marchman as well. Dennis Morgan is 25. 25? Oh my God. Come on. Can we all chill? And by the way, this isn't a shot at Mason Marchman. Dallas. That's a good, what we'll, a good match. We'll get to that. What we'll a good match. That. But um, the, the Leafs want to be a four checking team. And Obey Kubel be. helps with that. Uh, Gaudet helps with that. I think he's a great skater. Skate him and hard. Malgan uh, is going to help with that. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean bang and crash. I don't think anyone is like, oh, shit, here comes Dennis Malgan. But he's going <laughs> to retrieve pucks. He's going to make defenders make uh, quicker decisions that will cause turnovers to the other assassins the Leafs have. 
you create turnovers for Nylander, for Marner, for Matthews, for Tavares, etc., cetera, et cetera. You got to hear about Z-Biotics, especially if you just spent a weekend in Montreal like the three of us did. Mm. Listen, Z-Biotics is something you take the day before. It's a pre-alcoholic probiotic and the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. We know what that feels like, don't we? Yes. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's the blame for your rough, rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this product down. It's designed to work like your liver, but it's in your gut where you need it the most. And remember, you got to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol, and please drink responsibly. So check this out. Go to Zbiotics to try it for yourself. Zbiotics.com slash STP to get 15% off your first order when you use the code SDP at checkout. Zbiotics is backed by 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, head to Zbiotics.com slash STP and use that code STP at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode. Well, that was silly. Free agency. Free agency, goodness. Yeah, there was a lot of money spent. Mm-hmm. A lot of money spent. So what else do we do all summer? Well, we fade the Blue Jays. We, maybe we do. Maybe we do. <laughs> also, we check out all the other sports. Uh, you've got the CFL. You've got tennis. You've got so many the other US things. US Open's coming up, Oh, baby. yeah. End of August. Sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. Before the game, live and play. Or, you know, how your favorite players are going to perform. Or, you know... As early as this week, where are your favorite players going to sign? Yeah. Uh, doing it right since 1997, Sports Interaction. It's Canada's sports book. Most competitive odds, Sports Interaction, makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now and see all that sports betting has to offer. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. That's sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. 19 plus, please play responsibly. Um, Moving on to the Oilers. The Oilers, we mentioned it, signed Campbell to a five-year, $25 million contract. We say that's a risk, but I got to tell you, I, I still think it's a great fit, and it still seems like it's going to work great. Zach Hyman's there. They're good friends. CC. This is the Barry. best. This is the best Oilers team I think we've seen since, well, I mean, it's, it's probably since the 80s Oilers because McDavid's there, but that 2006 team was pretty special. And, you know, with Pronger on the back end and Mike Pekka playing at his at his best. and Mike Pekka was on that team. Right? For, that was a Sergei great... Sergey Samsonov? Yeah. It's a great team. Yeah. And and I it's going to be fun to watch the Oilers this year. Mike Flames Pekka. fans. Did we, did we saw Mike Pekka the other day, right? <laughs> we yeah, did we see saw, Mike Pekka. Yeah. Saw him at the bar. In Montreal. And yeah, Chris yeah. Kelly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chris oh Kelly. and and I forgot to tell the story. We were at a bar and we saw Jay Woodcroft talking to people at like a pool table. <laughs> yes, yes. And he was doing the Jay Woodcroft pose. Do the do the pose. The, the, like just he has a he has a pose. He has a he was doing the Jay Woodcroft pose that he did at the Flames bench when he was going to shake Daryl Sutter's hand. And I remember just looking like hey, he's doing the thing. <laughs> he's doing the meme. Is he doing the meme or is that just how Jay Woodcroft stands? That's literally Jesse brought it up. That's a hundred percent what he looked like. He looked like he had Jay Woodcroft's face, and he stood like Jay Woodcroft. That's the that's the pose. Um, Evander Kane is also staying with the Oilers. Four year, twenty point five million dollar contract. A lot of people speculated it could get as high as eight million dollars on the open market for Evander Kane. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with that was a lie. Well, that's what people were speculating. <laughs> You were wrong. But five point one two five million. It's okay, bucks. you were only like three million dollars off. Oh gosh, who said that? Oh, there was a, a, liar. a lot of people. A lot of people. Um, Evander what? Kane, good fit alongside Connor McDavid, and I think, I think Dan Milstein dropped it from a plane, like uh, pamphlets. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I want to get as much as he could. Eight million dollars. Um, Evander Kane, uh, you know, w- obviously a good fit beside Connor McDavid, and they've been looking for that for a long, long time. Somebody outside of Leon Dry idol who can play with him finish they, finish it they ask ken holland hey what happens if he's a san jose shark in two weeks and he's like well uh we've uh, we've uh, thought about that and we have plans in place and uh yeah we'll cross that one they're not gonna make the oilers give up compensation get out of <laughs> no. here they're just Do, gonna null and void the deal money will change hands that's it i mean they might make them give up comp- compensation but what they're not gonna do is be like all right evander kane you have to play for the sharks like what the no then no they're not gonna There's, do that i i refuse um, and the NHL has much, much bigger fish to fry. Oh, yeah. They don't want to mess with it. They're done with this, I think. I think money will change hands here, guys. That's what's going to happen. Um, so the the Oilers look, you have to think they look better than last year. Um, and Calgary looks way worse. There's, and so to me, now you're looking at Edmonton, LA, 
and Vegas and sneaky little Vancouver in there too. Uh, but I yeah. would think the, th- the top three have got to be Edmonton, LA, Vegas, but I don't know who, which one comes first. Speaking of the goaltending market, um, Vancouver's another team where they have Thatcher Demko. Great goalie, right? Yeah. Who's the backup? I have no idea. Who's you, the backup? Uh, just to add as point, you left out Dallas, who finished ahead of Vegas. Yeah, that's true. Sorry about that. That's true. Um, uh, who's, the, who's the backup? Who's the backup? I don't know. Who is it? I know who it is now. Spencer it? Martin. That's right. No, I didn't know that. They are no a idea. Thatcher Dem. They're, they're, a, they're, I think, a good team, much improved team, a playoff contending team, and they are a Thatcher Demko injury away from like Connor Bedard. Um, <laughs> the the McKayev deal. No, I like Spencer Martin, but mm-hmm. yeah. the McKayev deal is interesting because he always had the talent that he showed off towards the end of the season here in Toronto. That's frustrating. But though. I, it, yes, it is injury, COVID, all the other things yeah. that happened. But the thing I want to, I do want to caution on, is that we saw it for the last half of one season. Say how much the money was. Four point <laughs> seven five million for four years. Yeah, that's, that's a each lot. Each year, that's a, that's you know a lot. What? He's the good thing about Ilya Mikheyev is even when he's not scoring, he's useful. Yeah, he's a great penalty killer. Yeah, the uh, worst speed. contracts are dudes you can't even use. The w- worst case scenario for Ilya Mikheyev is overpaid. Overpaid guy who can skate like the wind. Skate like the wind, be an elite penalty killer, always be a shorthanded threat. Yep. I mean, even if he takes a breakaway and misses, it kills time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, you always have to be aware of the Elia Mikheyev factor, even if the puck isn't going in for them. So overpayment, maybe, um, good player every fits, day fits what they need. It's so fits what much they money. It is. A I lot don't know how you reason that. It wasn't a good free agency year. So maybe if you're Vancouver, you're like, we're not in a position to buy Mikheyev for four years and four point seven five. Everyone wants to. Well, improve. Th- why, why not do that and then trade JT Miller like they're trying to? Right, the the talk about a team that's not done, they're not done at all. No, they're not done. that's has, another huge uh, shoe to drop. J T. Miller has no trade projection. I wonder if Calgary asks about him. Oof, it's Vancouver. I know, but it can be done. But wouldn't you, if you're again, Tree Living's got to be thinking about right now who's going to play with Lindholm and and Kachuk. The uh, no trade for J T. Miller was voided. So Miller was traded on June 22nd, 2019, prior to his modified no trade clause coming into effect, giving Vancouver the option of voiding the clause. Cap Friendly has confirmed that Vancouver did not honor his trade clause, so he can be traded anywhere. Wow, so they've, uh, because I was under the understanding, I guess when you have the no trade clause or even a modified no trade clause to start a contract, it can't be voided. You can waive it for the moment, but then it comes back. Because it used to be in the NHL where if, if you had a no trade clause and then you got traded, it was gone. Now, if you have a no trade clause and then you and you agree to get moved, you still have it. But so I what, guess they voided it because it never kicked in before he was traded. He never it never came into effect, so they were given the option to honor it. And then why it comes into that? effect, oh. and they're like, "Fuck you, no, <laughs> you're, yeah. you're great, but no, <laughs> we want to trade you." The 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 windfall you can get for JT Miller, I think might outweigh how good of a player he is yeah <laughs> for the vancouver Canucks. i think yeah. that's a that's an asset you have to you have to send out while it's at its peak like that's a hundred point guy i don't know how many more hundred point seasons he's got left him maybe a couple but like right now if you're vancouver jt miller's more useful as a trade asset than he is as a player on the well, ice for you to get a goalie <laughs> also bo horvat is up at the end of the season too he'll be a canuck forever i think you think so yeah I hope so. Or not. I don't know. <laughs> they're a really... Uh, they're an interesting team. There are so many... There's a real. There was a real vibe um, of unfinished business. You know what I mean? Like, I know CJ's off in the palm trees and having a good time on vacation. <laughs> By the way, they have a show coming out today. They do. If it but, hasn't come out already. Uh, but um, there was a real air of yesterday not meant nothing but it's usually a big uh like dude bob mckenzie used to make a bit out of he'd be halfway to the cottage when he announced like the last signing of the day it's like four o'clock in the afternoon or something uh i think we're gonna be busy for the next few weeks yeah because there's it feels like there's a lot of trades left to happen there's a lot of big names still out there cadre 
arguably the biggest, maybe second biggest name. Yep. Uh, Gaudreau's, and, and that's Gaudreau's great. a pretty big name. Listen, that's great for us because our schedule, by the way, if you're wondering, is we're going right till the first week in August. We're three a week for two weeks still. Yeah. So we two got, more weeks. so we'll have lots of info to talk about. It won't just be weird mm-hmm. summer episodes where we talk about, you know, whatever. <laughs> the, uh, the TSN show signed off for the summer at the end of the trade frenzy you would have seen this but they were like all right it's, it's time to go like we're done with hockey coverage well they and there's <laughs> yes but also no <laughs> but also there's like dozens and dozens of free agents out there who are names who need to be signed um i also uh <laughs> watching that i was like their broadcast went three full hours longer than sports nets yeah and i was like okay because there's a lot of stuff which just wasn't done when sports net was wrapping up i'm like guys where are you going where are you going? Anyway, you also have. I was to, doing my thing. You, yeah, no, you were your watching. network that you own over at Sportsnet. Uh, Steve's S- network. Steve Rogers. Um, <laughs> Steve Rogers. <laughs> I did a good four friend hour- of Ed Rogers. <laughs> uh, Steve Dangle. I did a four-hour stream and went straight into making a video. So yeah, I didn't, of course. I didn't get to watch. No, I don't expect that you would have seen that, but I was just like, wow, they wrapped it up early. Um, the Lightning wrapped up. Speaking of, uh, Sergachev, Sorelli, and Cernak all. On eight-year contract, Sergachev makes more money than Kale McCarr now at eight point five million dollars. No, he doesn't. Isn't Kale McCarr? No, oh, just, he- uh, just shy of Hedman. He makes no, more. Money. McCarr makes nine point five, I think. Does he? Okay, never mind. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. makes more money than Hedman. That makes sense though, because Hedman's deal was signed a while ago. Yes. Uh, Sergachev signing that eight point five million dollar deal. Sorelli at six point two five, and Cernak at five point two. Cernak at five point two feels a little bit high. But I can't hate any of these. So here's here's how good Tampa is. People looked at Cernak's deal and they went, that seems high. Mm-hmm. And I looked at it and I went, it does. But you know what it actually is? Market value. Hmm. He has 59 points in 226 games. And he blocked a billion shots in another <laughs> bid for the Stanley Cup in the final um, Sorelli and Sergachev have both played 92 career Stanley Cup playoff games. That's neither insane. is 25. <laughs> <a> crazy number <laughs> that is. Neither is over 25. Wow, that is stupid. Is is that is Druan asking for a trade? The greatest thing to happen to Sergachev in his whole life? Uh, yeah, yes, absolutely. And like, not a shot at McDonough, but like this forces Mikhail Sergachev to take a bigger role with the Tampa Bay Lightning. And he's and, ready. And well, he's ready. And if he continues to progress, they might be even better for it. Yeah, he should have been in that role already, yeah. really. But McDonough was kind of blocking the path there. And thankfully he was. That's how good the team was that this is a guy who's been playing under his position. And in a third pairing role, he put up like 40 points. It's unbelievable. Yeah, he's a really good player. He's he's worth uh, settling in on. Sorelli for six and a bit for eight years. He's going to be like 31. Yeah, you forget he's 24. Him and Sergachev are both going to be barely over 30 when those deals expire. We've watched so much lightning hockey in the last few years. It feels like <laughs> these guys are all older than they it's are. It's so yeah, true. Right? Yeah. But they're not. And, and what the, the wild thing about Tampa is... They have a core, and yesterday they locked up the other core. The outside edges yeah. of the core like, that they have. Like, who's their core? Like, Kucherov, Stamkos. Hedman, Stamkos. Vasilevsky. Point. And Vasilevsky. Point, Vasilevsky. But they've, but they've locked up Point, yeah. and they've locked up Sorelli, and, by and the they've way, locked up Sergeyev, and they've Sir- locked up... Sergeyev's deal, by the way, does not kick in until after this season. Yeah. That's right. The, all the deals just, they signed I, yesterday were. I right? just think that's... Cr- like, think about that. It's that's really, nine more years of Sergachev. They're oh, and Ian you Cole signed a one-year deal. Yeah, you got to be careful with long deals. I don't think you need to be careful with any of those ones. No, they seem pretty good, dude. Like Braden Point. Oh, for God, for crying out loud! Like Stamkos is going to be long gone, and that team will still be competitive. I don't know much about Stamkos. Is only thirty-two. Oh my God. <laughs> He's gonna be there. <laughs> I don't know about I don't know much about Jeff Fink, the person, but as an owner of an NHL franchise, that's the kind of owner you want. Who'd you call him? Isn't Jeff Fink? Isn't his Vinick? Vinick? Is that what it is? <laughs> oh, yeah, I was like, Ooh, oh, I Ooh. thought it was Fink. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, Vinick, I like that it guy. Yeah, it should be. Change your name, Jeff. Where were you, um, where I think were you thinking? I think it's it's uh that 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 ownership group that everything they do down there. Yeah. Everything they do in Tampa. And credit to Julian Breezewell for working all these deals, like, and getting the magic numbers, you know, and, like, you yeah. look at the contract, you're like, oh, Nikita Kucherov still has a $9.5 million contract. That guy should be making $12 million. People are really underrating the day they had because they didn't add. 
I mean, Wait. they got Ian Cole and they lost Andre Pallad. That's pretty bad. But no team has a more visible future than the Tampa Bay Lightning. You know what they are. <laughs> you know exactly what they are. Like even teams who have like drafted well and they have all these guys on ELCs, you have no idea what the future holds uh, financially. Mm -hmm. Like for a cap team. And remember, if the cap goes up the way you say it's going to, they are... It's a joke. Cackling. Cackling. Like we're looking at a Detroit-like... It's lightning. They're cracking dynasty. Like so, this could be a twenty-year run for the lightning. Yeah, where they're just in like the playoff and President's Trophy picture until Leo's in high school. Like they're they're, they're the unreal. The Detroit run was twenty-two years straight playoffs. What was it? Yeah, something like. And that. St. Louis was, had thirty years at one point. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, it yeah. Was like oh, wow. It was like from the to, oh the St. Louis Blues. Or the no, Detroit, 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 Detroit. Yeah, the, the Blues were like 1970 to or like to 2005 or something. It was some stupid number. It was crazy. Yeah. The Detroit but, one I remember because the streak broke. It started before I was born and it broke like while I was in my while we were doing like this podcast. But they you know? won. They won. What did they win? They won 97. They won 98. They won 2002. They won 2008. They lost the Stanley Cup in 96. They lost the Stanley Cup in 2009. That's six Stanley Cup final appearances. And for those of you keeping score, Tampa's already at four. <laughs> already at four. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I also want to throw With out there, group. Jeff Blaschel has joined them as an assistant coach. And I wondered what kind wow. of connection there would have been between Iserman and Breezewell on that one. Because they're... It just seems too on the nose, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's actually, they sort of uh, exchanged coaches, didn't they? Because Detroit hired the assistant coach from Tampa, I That's forget true. his name. Mm -hmm. The guy who uh, people were saying looks like Gru because people are mean. And uh, Jeff Blaschel, now under John Cooper. John Cooper's got to watch his <laughs> the job. Man, <laughs> the man you're thinking of, Derek uh, Lenoid. Lalonde. Uh, Lalonde. Is it Lalonde? Well, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, I, stop I, making fun of Derek. <laughs> I didn't. It was Twitter. It was Twitter. Um, Twitter's mean. Obviously, Ottawa had another great move yesterday. Claude Giroux is now an Ottawa senator. Um, boy. Can I read this tweet from Cap Friendly Depth Charts? Sure. Uh, the Ottawa Senators projected top six of Kachuk, Norris, uh, Giroux, Debrinkit, Stutzla, and Batherson scored 166 goals last season. Wow. Holy fucking shit. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And you know what? They've had a fantastic offseason. Yep. They've done. Nah. They've done it. And, and you know what? Dior, Dorian was right. It is the next phase. The rebuild is over. He was a year early. <laughs> yeah, he was a, a year early. <laughs> the next phase, though, he said at this draft. But he got ah, it. Okay. So we got to give him that. We got to give him that. It is. And uh, a three-year, $19.5 million contract for a guy to come home to Ottawa, I think is pretty cool. Um, and what a... It, it, and like, is Claude Giroux not the guy... He's like the older Brady Kachuk a little bit. You almost want... He's got... There's that grittiness there's to him. another underrated nasty... Nasty. Uh, nasty player. Mean. And and now it's this incredible apprenticeship for Stutzla and Norris. Oh, those two guys are going to be killers in this league for a long. Don't time. Don't forget Batherson. Yeah, they uh, Alex Formant, Shabbat. Like it's a it's one of the best young teams in the entire league. All of a sudden, that like that decor is a world of hurt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we went over that a little bit earlier. Yeah. But uh, some of this money they need to reserve it for the Norris contract coming up. And uh, what do they have on defense again? Shabbat, Thomas Shabbat, it's, and then it's and Zeitz Artem of Hamannik, Hamannik, and yeah. Zoop, Artem Zoop, and, 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 and they didn't have to trade for Hamannik. No, no, that was that seemed like a deal from the uh, we're not letting Dorian really do what he wants phase. And now it seems like Dorian's kind of doing what he wants, and it's a lot better deal. And did they not just buy out Del Zotto as well? He was there. I mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. I think you're right. Yeah, they got Brandstrom. He needs to take a step. DJ Smith. If he gotta, does, that'll be big. DJ Smith's got to let him take a step. I don't think he has a choice. Well, maybe not, and maybe they're not giving him one. But it, uh, it seems to me like DJ Smith's just not a fan, and it's like you got it. This guy was a huge part of the deal that sent Mark Stone to Vegas. Give him a shot regularly, please. Maybe he needs a new deal. Yeah, maybe that's well, that's RFA. important too. There's a, there's a lot of RFA still out there, dude. You know a huge RFA out there that no one's talked about at all. Jake Ottinger, 
Actually? Yeah. People are talking about like, oh, Detroit should offer sheet Rasmus Sandin. Like, okay, fine. If you have cap, Ottinger. There are a bunch of what? teams who need a goalie right now who can just be like, Jake Ottinger is one of the best goalies in the league. Why did the Leafs do that? Because they're never going to. They don't they're, have the picks. Dallas is going to do it. They don't have the picks. They do. That would have cost them like a second. They don't have their own <laughs> six million. No, they, it's not even an offer sheet worth making. Someone matches that. Oh. Yeah, Dallas would match that. The Leafs no, have get, their first round pick. The Leafs don't have their second. The Leafs have their first, third, fifth, and sixth. There's one that's a first and a third. I do know that. Yeah, someone someone should just be like, I'm going to give Jake Ottinger $8 million. <laughs> For a year. Jake, oh, I'm Jake just, Ottinger I'm is just, unbelievable. Yeah, I'm just throwing it out there. There's a bunch of RFAs who still need deals, and that that's one where I, I wouldn't be surprised if the chatter picked up. Until the Dallas Stars just lock him up. Is I'm sure Jake Ottinger up. the second best goalie in the league after Vili Huso? Oh my God, get out of here. Uh, <laughs> no, because who passes Huso? No one. Except Bennington. But like, no one. Guys. I'm asking the important question. Jesse, Jesse's like Dubas. He's got his guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, loves his guys. Jesse, well, who, 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 you got? guys. who you got? Um, Timmy Stutz. Lucas Raymond. Timmy uh, Stu, Timmy <laughs> Stu, Uka Pekka Lugan. Uh, Uka! Uh, let's go. <laughs> who's, who's the guy Billy. we were just talking about? Billy Russo. So, uh, yeah. Not Tavares. <laughs> Quentin <laughs> Byfield. You're a big Byfield Quentin guy. Quentin Byfield, Quentin yeah. Quentin Byfield. Yeah, was a great hey, Alex Turcott. Turcott, yeah, yeah. How do I remember your <laughs> not real team? I don't know. I know. It was a, it was a legendary not real team. <laughs> oh, that Buffalo Sabres team. Who'd you have on D? Didn't you have Morgan Riley? Uh, no, not on the Sabres team. I don't think. Oh no, not on the Sabres team, but on no, Leafs. the Leafs one. Yeah, we had more. We had uh, we he was Captain Morgan. We named him Captain That's after we moved John Tavares. It was Captain Morgan. We ran with him for like eight years, and he never won shit. Yeah, but we made it to the Stanley Cup final, and then we yeah. lost. How Leaf? Twice. And Gibson. Um, listen, if your team was not <laughs> mentioned today, I apologize, but there's not any way that we could have gotten through the entirety of the free agency picture. Yeah, uh, uh, but we also have a show tomorrow. Yeah, uh, so Detroit I'm, had a really good day. Oh, we're going to talk about it tomorrow. Yeah, there you go. Detroit, Dallas. We got to talk about all that stuff. There's lots. There's lots still to cover. Um, so look at this as part one of two. And remember, sure. Aaron Portsline is joining us tomorrow. Okay. So we're going to break down Columbus a little bit more because that will still be a story. And hopefully tonight we get a Nazem Kadri decision. Not that it will, but if we could, that would be really great. That'd be. Oh no, he's going to wait for like one thirty tomorrow. Oh. Just God. You know what? You doubted me, so kiss my ass. That's, <laughs> that's what he's going to do. You said I was a liability in the playoffs? Kiss my ass. Uh, it was. Here's my anyway, very uh, dented cup. Um, so do we want to do a press conference today? Uh, we don't have to. You want me to hit the button? Oh, yeah, we can hit the button. We'll do a press conference tomorrow, maybe? Sure. All right. Whatever. All right, listen. We got, always got questions. Steve, do you have any videos coming out in the next 24 hours, or are you um, kind of just... Ask Kyle. Do this. Ask Kyle. I made a video <laughs> yesterday, so ask Kyle. Ha, Kyle. Heck out. Nothing's happened. Okay. Until something does. All right. Well, wait on Kyle. What then. was it? You tell me. From the future. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Get a sportsbook. Follow the guys on Twitter. At Steve underscore Dangle. At Adam W-Y-L-D-E. And at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.